going to critique uh, the mainstream or the mainstreaming education system, which I am going to do uh, in an education institution funded by the central government. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will begin with a quote of Tagore. Uh, what we now call a school, uh, quote, this is in quotes. Huh? What we now call a school in this country is really a factory. The teachers are part of it. At half past ten in the morning, the factory opens with the ringing bell. Then as teachers start talking, the machines start uh, working. The teachers stop talking at four in the afternoon when the factory closes and the pupils go home carrying with them a few pages of machine-made learning. One advantage of factory is that it can make goods exactly to order. Moreover, the goods are easy to label because there is, there is not much difference between what the different machines turn out. I will urge you all to focus on the last words. There is not much difference between what different machines turn out. I was born in a village called Himishupachan, 80 kilometers west of Leh. Uh, in the village I was taught that rocks, water, mountains could be homes of spirits. Spirits are locally known as Sla and Gu, a big rock believed to be uh, residents of a spirit live, uh, still live in my village house comfortably and proudly. It commands over one of our rooms. The house was repaired by my father in 1980s. Uh, before him, my great-grandparents constructed it for the first time. No one dared to move the rock, let alone break it, it to convert into building material. The sacred rock is not a one-off case. In fact, the whole village is a sacred manifestation. The village is sometimes referred to as Lusa, uh, which means land owned by the spirits. What does this belief system tell us? It, it tells us that in the perception of reality of the Ladakhis, there are more than human elements in this world. The world is beyond the materiality that can be seen by naked eyes. In the natural world, humans share space with the interesting, yet very scary, world of capricious spirits. The humans in this world are not the omnipotent individuals that liberal philosophers like Locke and Mill taught us. Humans are not the center of happening in this world. They are the best, they, they are at best supporting actors in the drama of the natural world. Seeing spirits in springs, rocks, sacred groups, uh, mountains, in a way renders them living. Giving life uh, and name to springs allows humans to see from the perspectives of the springs. It also gives rise to an interaction with nature that mimics environmental protection. It, uh, it also intimately bound up Ladakhis with the natal earth or soil. Then at some point in my life, school happened to me. I was not a good student, even, but even an academically poor student like me vividly remember the stage in school where differentiation between living and non-living things were taught to me. Rocks, mountains, springs, lakes, uh, lakes, earth and so on were taught to be non-living things. The root of this differentiation is separation between human and nature about which uh, Ache Gloria and Abba Satish talked about yesterday. The dualism between living and non-living things was so convincing that it got stuck in my mind. Few years ago I heard that the Jains believe everything to be living. I scoff at their belief. This also made the Buddhist part in me feel superior that Buddhism is more scientific. <laughs> this I did without realizing that scientific method or positivism is the reason behind why Ladakhi or other indigenous worldviews got foreclosed. Exactly 17 days ago, I presented a paper at this very venue on environmental ethics that emerges from old Ladakhi worldview. The discussion that ensued after the, after the presentation was saddening for me. People woke up to me asking whether there are Tha or Lu in reality. Such was the hold of positivism on Ladakhis that they completely missed the point of seeing reality differently. 
or seeing reality as our ancestors saw. And yes, there are spirit, uh, spirits for those who believe in it. My father, the famous uh, Meme Gangzurpa shopkeeper, attribute his success in life to the rock that live in my village house. Also, La and Lu could also be looked at as concepts in Ladakh and Tibet, the, uh, like equality, liberty and justice are in the English world. I cannot go to the market and order three kilos of equality. Can I? I cannot show, I cannot show Lhaj and Lu's like modernity cannot show me equality and justice. To bring in practice the idea of Lhaj and Lu, people created Lhakang, Lhatos, rites and rituals around it. These are where the concept could be located. Similarly, the supposedly advanced people located equality and justice under various articles of constitutions. To be sure, I am not anti-science. I am not saying that I will not visit an orthopedician if I break my legs. <laughs> I am only questioning the ways of knowing and being taught to us through education system based predominantly on methods of science. To understand that there are different ways of knowing and being, this Ladakhi had to wait till 2017. In 2017, I went to the tribal belt of southern Odisha. I lived in a Konda Adivasi village for almost a year to do an action research project on education. Like the Tom Cruise of the last samurai, <laughs> I, I learned the Konda ways of being, seeing and knowing and unlearned the modern ways. Kondas believe that earth is their mother in the literal sense of the word. All their pujas are to propitiate the spirit of their mother. Similarly, there are spirits of water, forest, hills, and so on. This element of na these elements of nature are all living in their worldview. Whatever the Kondhas taught me also opened up my village and my community in a very different way altogether. I was then uh, stuck by these questions. What was and being taught to tribal communities? Are schools acting as training centers for tribal people to prepare them for the 9 to 5 jobs of the industrial society? Are we being groomed to be consumers? Are we taught our way out of the place-based economy? Is it to prepare the tribal children to normalize selling of labor power as commodity in the market? Or, or uh, are, we, uh, are we being made into job seekers? The supposedly tribal children are made into corporate and government job seekers and the supposedly underprivileged become stapas, drivers, sepoys, watchmen, clerks. The education... <laughs> the education mass produces cognitive students and then is education facilitating turning away of the educated from, uh, from the masses, from practice, from agriculture, from culture and from nature? Uh, so uh, let us reread the previous line of Tagore. There is not, not much difference between what different machines turn out. A school going child in Leh is not very different from a school going Khasi child in Shillong or a Irula tribe child in Coimbatore. This is because school in a way removes the children from the influence of their community, from the, from the community's ways of being, knowing and seeing, and from the agricultural seasonal work in the fields. Today I can speak and write in English, but I cannot grow barley. So I have to buy chakki atta, probably, from, probably grown in Punjab from shops in Lake. I cannot but participate in the long distance trade. Similarly, the, school, uh, the ambience of my home and village was completely missing in the school. Then there was the disciplining about timing, sitting, standing in silence and about hygiene. Everything was monitored, routinized and uh, enforced with massive force. Moreover, western style clothes were promoted, Ladakhi ornaments were prohibited. A distinct identity of the region that I come from was the ponytail of men. But I cannot complain about ponytails. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, these markers of outwardly difference were killed the moment I was enrolled. I have a bigger loss 
to add to this, I lost father when I was enrolled. I'm a product of polyandrous marriage. However, monogamy was the rule of the educated. My father's name had to be written in official records of the school, but there was only space for one. <laughs> <laughs> to end this, uh, education system is, is a way of indoctrinating uh, children into mainstream values and aspirations and mainstream ways of seeing reality, which are far removed from those of their own communities. But at the same time, I don't want my views on education to be unidimensional. For educational spaces like universities are also spaces where uni uh, women, my, person, my friends, find freedom from patriarchal setups like families and societies. Thank you.